Taking off like a loaded gun, run, 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 run. It's a big world that I'm taking on. The nerves are here, but the fear is gone. Run, 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 run. Summer's here, I can feel the calling. Saying, come on, come on, and run with me. I feel so high, I'm nearly falling. Summer's gonna set me free. The grass is green, the sky is blue. Can't hide this feeling's true. Oh, run, 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 run. I know that life gets hard. You never stop like a racing car. Run, run, run. Run, run, run. Summer's here, I can feel the calling. Say, come on, come on, and run with me. I feel so high, I'm nearly falling. Summer's gonna set me free, set me free. Not gonna let her be Cause she's gonna set me free She's gonna set me free Whoa. And when the fall time comes And the moon overthrows the sun You run, run, run Run, run, run I know that like it's hard, you never stop like a racing car. Run, 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 run. Summer's here, I can feel the calling. So come on, come on, and run with me. I feel so high, I'm nearly falling. Summer's gonna set me free. Taking off like a loaded gun. I'm gonna run, 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 run. run. Summer's here, I can feel the calling. Say, come on, come on, and run with me. I feel so high, I'm nearly falling. Summer's gonna set me free. She's on the run. Hey, Whoa. hey, hey, um, uh, uh, no, no, um, but uh, yeah, we'll okay, all right, okay. how you doing, man? I'm doing great, I'm doing great, it's so good to see you, it's been like way too long, I mean, 
now that we're both vaccinated, uh, we can hang out, right? Oh, totally. We can do all the fun things that we missed out. I know 2021, this summer is going to be so lit. That's what the kids say, right? Lit? I, I, I wouldn't know. Okay. Yeah. Let's just pretend that's what okay. they say. I think so. <laughs> cool. Well, what are you looking forward to now that things are opening up? Well, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to cheering on the, uh, the thorns and the timbers. Timbers Army is back. PTFC. Woo! All right. Woo! Go thorns. Timbers. Timbers. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many good, good folks on there, Absolutely. you know. Wait, is that Jack? Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's PPF board member and Portland Timbers legend Jack Jewsberry, the one and only. Wow, I'm excited to get out there and watch the games again. Um, the other thing I'm looking forward to oh, yeah? is bird watching. Bird watching. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I'm not much of a birder. I'm not, you know, I don't know the science names to them. Mm -hmm. But I do enjoy a good Swiss show at Chapman Elementary. Oh, well, th that's uh, that's cool, JR. That's really cool. Um, anyway, well, I'm just looking forward to maybe like throwing some Frisbee around the park and, you know, hanging out with some friends. So, I don't oh, know. nice. Yeah. Throw it here. Throw it here. Oh, oh, Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got it. Here, here, all right. Here, 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 here we go. Whoa. Oh, ah. Ow. oh my. Ooh. Well, um, maybe maybe we shouldn't be throwing frisbees. Uh, what do you think we should do? Yeah, I think we should probably just go to the Friends and Allies Summit. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon, wherever you're joining us. Uh, my name is J.R. Lily If you know Navajo, you know what I said. If you don't know, um, I just introduced myself, who I am in my native tongue. And I am one of the Portland Parks Foundation board members. Hello, and uh, my name is Silas Anderson. I'm also a Portland uh, Parks Foundation uh, board member. Great. We're so excited for you to be able to join us this evening. Uh, before we get started, we definitely want to acknowledge some of the history um, of all of our parks here in Portland, especially if you're watching here. Um, we acknowledge that the Portland area, area metro area rests on the traditional village sites of the Multnomah, the Wasco, the Cowlitz, Clackamas, Clackamas, Bands of Chinook, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Malalala, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River creating communities and summer encampments to harvest and use the plentiful natural resources of this area. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone to our second uh, Friends and Allies Summit. So tonight we gather to celebrate volunteerism and leadership in our parks. Yeah, especially excited because this week the Portland Parks Foundation was born 20 years ago. So happy birthday to us. Happy birthday. Woo! Yes. The foundation grew out of an amazing parks planning effort Vision 2020, which was a 20-year blueprint for improving our park system. The foundation was founded to broaden access uh, and bring excellence to our park system. Uh, in 20 years, we have done a lot. But, you know, we still got a lot of work to do, we're really, and we're lo really looking forward to the next 20 years. And PPF is committed to addressing racial inequities in our park system, as well as nurturing and broadening leadership in the park community. You know, parks are essential to our health, our social resilience, and our democracy. In Portland, we are fortunate to have thousands of volunteers who recognize the value of our park system and donate tens of thousands of hours annually towards creating a more equitable and welcoming space for all. Yes, tonight we will celebrate volunteer leaders through our U.S. Bank Parks Champion Awards. We will also honor the wonderful leader who chaired the Parks 2020 and was found in the founding member, founding chair of our Portland Parks Foundation, Joey Pope. We'll hear about an incredible new leadership fund, and we'll talk about the in per. The, we'll talk to the person leading the parks into the future, Commission Carmen Rub, Commissioner Carmen Rubio. All right. So let's kick things off with our annual U.S. Bank Parks Champion Awards. These awards recognize two individuals, amongst many, who have provided. Uh, outstanding volunteer service to a park, community center, natural area, or community garden. The recipients will be able to direct a grant of $1,500 to a community organization of their choice. Are we doing Dogecoin now or no? I think with next year's awards. Next year, okay. Yeah, cool. once the value goes up. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes, this spring, Portland Parks Foundation received 48 nominations for volunteers leading the charge on creating a more active 
equitable access to nature, play, health, and places to, for connection. After this program, we'll make, make sure to read through the Parks Champion booklet in your post-event email for inspiration. Some of the highlights include volunteers in the last year, despite a global pandemic, did some amazing things like pocket parks in park deficient neighborhood, led outdoor gatherings for BIPOC and immigrant refugee community members, maintained parks, public gardens, and public greenways, um, provide access to fresh and gardening support to those with low income and accessible bar accessibility barriers, placed justice advocacy and revitalization efforts, created access to affordable, safe youth programming. Well, I want to thank you to those who took the time to share their stories. Uh, each one of the nominees are champions. And this year, it was an extremely tough decision for the steering committee. There are so many great stories out there. And I loved hearing about all the great things that people are doing in the city. Um, but this year, we have five finalists. Um, Adrian De La Roca and Howard Patterson for Boise Elliott Native Grove. Benjamin Tarn, Friends of Brooklyn Park for the Summer Youth Program. Donovan Smith and Matt Randall, North Portland Parks, Gordon Campbell and Kathleen Madden, Multnomah Arts Center, and Pamela Slaughter, People of Color Outdoors. Wonderful. And so now, now's the odd chance we get to announce who the winners are. So these are the finalists out of 48 that came down to these five. And out of these five, we have uh, who's our champions? Ah, excellent. Thank you very much. Wonderful hands. Beautiful hands. And the first Park Champion Award goes to Donovan Smith and Matt Randall. Woo! Yeah. Congratulations. Donovan, are you with us? Hey. Hey, Hi. Donovan. How's it going? Uh, uh, you know yeah. yeah, Matt. Okay. Well, well yeah. I just want to say I'm, I'm super excited to present this award to you guys. Um, you guys have done a really great work in North Portland parks uh, and um, I'm including starting a friends group in, in George Park. So I'm really excited to hear uh, what do you guys have planned for you know, North Portland parks uh, this coming this summer? Sure. Um, well, I'll just say, uh, you know, it's honored to be doing this work alongside Matt. This is really, you know, this is Matt's vision and I just get to uh, support in terms of, you know, uh, seeing what's next for George Park. Um, that's his neighborhood. Um, that's the park he grew up across the street from. I will say um, on my end, another park that I'm uh, putting a lot of focus on is uh, Patton Square Park, which is attached to the Interstate Firehouse Cultural Center. Um, that's a Black Arts Center that's been here in the city for a very long time. And, uh, you know, the park that's named, uh, or that it's named after, it, it's named after, you know, some of the people who got land off of that don donation act back in the 1850s and so i think it's more appropriate for it to be named after a steward of black arts um here in the city so uh been working to get that renamed after star child which if you don't know who star child is you should he's the creator of hip-hop day um That's here in the city of portland and so many other things but i know time is brief so matt if you want to say more about what we're doing at uh george park that's all you most definitely. Uh, you know, it's an honor. First and foremost, thank you to Portland Parks Foundation. Uh, it's great to be uh, nominated for this award alongside Donovan, which is a dear friend of mine. Uh, I love what he's doing with trying to rename Patton Park uh, Star Child after Star Child, who is a legend uh, in music um, here in the city. So that's beautiful. And uh, I guess I will say as far as what I'm trying to do for George Park, um, I grew up across the street from there my whole life. Um, it's a park that I feel like is underserved, but I'm trying to make it to where it's more fun for, for our youth. There's so many more kids in that area now than there was when I was growing up as a kid. You know, I live back in St. John's and my son is six years old. I'm trying to make it fun for him and, and his friends to enjoy the city park. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's just an ongoing journey. Um, we're trying to, we're, we're going to start uh, making a music festival there. So we're just trying to bring awareness and bring in joy to the park and bring in joy to that neighborhood because it so desperately needs that. So uh, thanks again for nominating us and we really appreciate this award. Thank you so much. Awesome.
Great. Well, thank you guys so much. And I really appreciate everything you do. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do in George Park. I, I pretty much ride past there every day. So, all right. Um, next award. Yes. Next award. Who's it going to be? Wonderful hand model. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the, the second champion or the other champion is going to be Benjamin Tarn. Woo. All right. Ooh. Benjamin. Yeah, Benjamin, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. There he is. All right. Hey, <laughs> hey Benjamin, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Wonderful. Congratulations on winning this award. Uh, could you give yourself an introduction, a little bit about the work you've been doing? Um, sure. Yeah, my name is Ben Tarney, and I uh, chair the Friends of Brooklyn Park. And um, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity. And I'm uh, really grateful to the many people and organizations that make this effort possible, such as the Portland Parks Foundation. Um, and also thank you to all the other park champion nominees. I'm, I'm humbled by the amazing work that you all do um, for our parks. You're very inspiring. And um, thank you to US Bank. And a big thank you to the Friends of Welcome Park Board, because it's a team effort. I'm just the face of it. And also thanks to the Port and Parks and Rec and your partnership. And um, thank you also to the Brooklyn community, the local businesses and the BAC um, for all their um, support and belief in our organization. And then also I wanna give a big thank you out um, lastly to my family for, the, for their support um, of me and the program with all the countless hours of prep, coordinating, childcare, driving, volunteering, and the list goes on. Um, but the Summer Youth Program, um, it's been a part of Brooklyn Park um, for nearly 50 years. And recently, like so many other programs, um, it got cut on uh, the budgets, got cut and our program actually got cut from existence. And that's when our community came together. Um, and I, I with along with uh, some other community members, spearheaded an effort. And um, we got to hear once again, the phrases, I'm going to the park program, or can we go to the shack? And those are both very familiar phrases to Brooklyn Knights and Southeast uh, families. And our, our program offers uh, book clubs and tutorings, awards for brain games and hand-eye sports games alike. We have arts and crafts, and we have our famous 300 foot slip and slide. And um, it, to me, it's, it's like a summer program in our, or a summer camp in our neighborhood. It's a place that parents can be with or send their kids to. And they, they know they're getting a place that is healthy, safe, and positive for our youth. And the kids know that they are cared for and cared about. And many in the community have actually shared with me personally the impact that this program has had on, their, on them and their families. And um, Brooklyn Park and the Summer Youth Program, they, they're, they're really important and they bring our community together. Um, excuse me one second. They bring our community together. Uh, um, th it's a gathering, the, the, park pro the park is actually is the heart of Brooklyn. We don't have a library, we don't have a community center, and we don't even have a neighborhood school. And so this is where we gather for our community events and our potlucks, our concerts, picnics, ice cream socials. And during the winter months, it serves as our epic sledding hill. And during the summer, Portland youth get 40 days of the Brooklyn Park program. And what makes Friends of Brooklyn Park work is it's focus on bringing the community together. And our events um, serve both as a gathering and fundraisers. And together we get to grow play and discover. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Woo, all right. Congratulations to both our champions, to all the finalists. Uh, there's also some special recognition. Check out the booklet later on, read all about all the nominees, find ways to connect to our champions and support the work that they're doing. I was definitely sold on the sledding. You know, are you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywhere we can join that, uh, count us in. But before we take off on that kind of adventure, let us welcome the fabulous, the wonderful, our leader, the famous Randy Gray. Woo! Come on down. Woman. Hello, everyone. Um, it's really a pleasure to be with you even virtually and um, to be here to honor uh, Joey Pope, our founding chair. Um, I wanted to just shout out a few people how, who I know are in the audience and we can't see each other, but I thought it'd be uh, nice for uh, Joey and everybody to know that they're here. Uh, many are former board members and have worked with us extensively like Rich Brown, uh, Charlie Swindells, 
B.J. Simmons, Linda Morrow, Harriet Odebanio, Biano, sorry, um, John, Jonathan Cogan, Elaine Franklin, David Judd, Bill Hawkins, uh, Gay Greger, um, Meryl Reddish, Steve Cook, Anna Goldrich, and uh, Richard Pope, and uh, and then all of our former directors uh, are here: um, Jeff Anderson and um, uh, Nick Hardig and um, Linda Laviolette. So um, just know that they're they're here with us. Um, Joey has been honored many, many times, and I, I won't go through all the honors that she's had, but I'd like to tell you just a, um, three quick stories. So in the 1980s, Hoyt Arboretum really had no entrance or, or visitor center. It's, it had a rotting picnic shelter across the street from an old garage that had been repurposed as a maintenance facility. Well, a Hoyt neighbor, um, Andre Stevens, uh, wanted to honor her deceased hu husband. And so Joey went to work. She got her childhood friend, Bill Hawkins, to draw up a scheme for a visitor center. She convinced Portland Parks and Recreation to build a bold new picnic shelter across the street. And with uh, PPR project manager, Marianne Casson, she convinced TriMet to build an adjacent parking lot and a trail connecting to the new visitor, connecting the new visitor center to Washington Park's new Max station. It was an ensemble performance, city, regional, and private monies, plus pro, pro bono work that Joey orchestrated into a sum greater than its parts, a front door to the Hoyt Arboretum. In the early aughts, Leach Garden was struggling to survive and um, as an organization. Uh, Linda Morrow asked Joey to get involved. She started a series of walk and talks, inviting small groups uh, of people to the garden for tours and chats over tea. She got West Siders all the way over the river and over I-205 um, to visit and, to, uh, and folks at the Garden Club, Portland Garden Club, to hold events at, at Leach Botanical Garden. And soon guests became members and volunteers who then became advocates. And then Joey served as the honorary chair of the $10 million capital campaign to implement phase one of the garden's master plan, which just opened with the beautiful aerial tree walk you see behind me. A third story. Parks Commissioner Jim Francisconi convinced Joey to serve as the chair of a citizens committee for really the most comprehensive parks plan in the city's history. The committee was incredibly diverse, peppered with community leaders who didn't uh, often didn't agree on stuff, imagine that in Portland. Joey served as a referee, but also a coach, reaching these people, reaching out to these people individually between the meetings to figure out what the common ground was. And then halfway through, she added another level of complication, merging the citizen committee with a Portland Parks and Recreation internal uh, committee with an equally large and diverse uh, uh, group of folks. Tactically challenging beyond belief, but strategically far reaching, the final vision 2020 synthesized the many viewpoints together. And once more, there was enough camaraderie amongst the folks um, and uh, to, uh, on the citizens committee who went on to become the founding members of two pro of the proposed initiatives, the Portland Parks Board and us, the Portland Parks Foundation. So 20 years, here we are. And there's lots of other stories and projects and you can read about more of them uh, on, on our website. But for a more personal view of Joey and her work, I'd like to invite Michelle Harper, who worked very closely with Joey during her years uh, with Commissioner Charles Jordan and at PPR, where she served as the citywide collaborative services manager for many years. So please uh, join me in welcoming Michelle Harper. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening, honoring our community angel, uh, Joey. Uh, Charles Jordan said that every park system needs a, a dedicated advocate like Joey Pope. We were in a very exciting time with the Parks Vision 2020 plan, as well as the Parks Foundation, these two major initiatives that were going to shift the paradigm of how we operate our organization. Watching Joey and working with her closely, I watched her create a vision I watched her tell our story in a different way for everyone to understand the importance and the sense of urgency of the work that we must do to protect this legacy and to build on this legacy for our children. Joey's amazing dedication and commitment 
and her accomplishments are what legacies are made of. Her sphere of influence is far and wide for the benefit of our children. You know that she is the ultimate consensus builder and negotiator. For example, during the city council budget hearings, she challenged the city council. She challenged them to experience the benefits, to gain a deeper understanding of the value of our park system and what it brings to our city. She didn't want them to just rely on briefings. She, she just simply said, we should not have to convince you. And the result of that was we started to uh, put together site tours for the city council so they could see the value and the importance of our work and what we did up close and personal. We've been very fortunate to have Joey as a champion for the children. You see the evidence of her footprints all around us in the places and the spaces where we gather. We have a vibrant and healthy park system and it enriches our lives in more ways can, that can be counted. Thank you so much, Joy, for being a wonderful blessing to us. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michelle. Uh, really heartfelt words and um, uh, thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce uh, Zary Santner, former Portland Parks uh, Director, Portland Parks and Recreation Director, and also an Emeritus Board Member of Portland Parks Foundation. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Randy. Randy, I want to thank you and the Parks Foundation for giving me the, a few minutes to acknowledge Joey's immense contributions to our park system. And on, on behalf of all parks advocates to express our gratitude to this exceptional lady. Uh, like many of you, Joey began her volunteerism for the park system by getting involved with the care of an improvement to, her, to the park nearest to her home, which as Randy mentioned is Hoyt Arboretum. Through that process, Rand, um, Joey recognized two important facts. First was that the underfunded and understaffed state of Hoyt Arboretum was not unique to that park. In fact, it was true with all parks in the entire system. And the second, the welcoming attitude of committed ground staff and Bureau management, starting with uh, Director Charles Jordan and his very hardworking deputy director, David Judd, who uh, believed in partnership and uh, collaborations with private individuals and organizations to enhance the park system. By observing Joey in action, uh, her razor sharp, ability to focus on tasks at hand, her methodical follow through, coupled with her persuasive powers, as Randy mentioned, to entice others to get involved, not to mention her insightful and astute observations during meetings, encouraged the bureau management and a few parks commissioner, including, including Charlie Hales, Jim Francisconi, Dan Salzman to lean on her for help often and repeatedly, which she would readily and willingly accept. Those of you who have worked with Joey are familiar with her inimitable style. On her all business side, she is resolute, result oriented, eloquent, allergic to frivolities, and eager to listen and learn. On her gentle side, she embodies grace, genuine kindness, generosity. Together, these qualities create a marvelous alchemy for success on anything that she took on. But most remarkably, while she did all the hard work she would never fail 
to express her appreciation to others who work with her by either sending beautifully handwritten thank you notes, but most often personally delivering bouquets of flowers and pots of plants to the front doors of staff and her collaborators. As you can see, there are many things to admire about this exceptional lady. What I admire most about Joey is her total belief in the intrinsic value of parks and open, open spaces and her long held passion that they be accessible and available to all people, especially those in the socioeconomically disadvantaged communities. Finally, I want to, uh, I find it very, very fitting that Joey and her family have decided to continue her legacy of volunteerism, giving, and leadership by generously funding a program in the Parks Foundation that sparks and cultivates future generations of leaders in support of our precious park system. Congratulations, Joey. I was honored and privileged to have worked with you for over 25 years, and I treasure the friendship that developed as a result of that collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sari. I'm really so glad you could be with us uh, uh, tonight. And now, without further ado, um, I would like to introduce Joey Pope. Go ahead and read it. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, do, do, do I talk? Yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you so much. It's so great to hear about all the good work being done and who all is here, collaborators, co-conspirators, and good friends. Maybe we can all meet soon in a park. <laughs> I've been lucky in life to have the time and resources to help our parks but I've been even luckier to have so many people willing to join with me in making our park system one of the greatest in the country. My generation has done and is doing some good work. And now it's also time for many of you and others as well to grab the torch and run. We still need to make our parks more plentiful more beautiful, more well-maintained, and most of all, more accessible to all of our communities. I'm honored to offer a helping hand that Randy will tell you about. Thank you so much, Joey. Um, we are extremely proud to announce the new Joey Pope Fund for Parks Leadership. Joey and her family have made the first contribution of $150,000 to fund and uh, to fund this and will match contributions up to 250,000 for a total endowment of $500,000 if we're successful. Here's how it'll work. The foundation will solicit proposals uh, from organizations and individuals. A jury of parks experts and knowledgeable at-large community members uh, will award one to two grants to invest in new parks leaders or advanced specific projects. The criteria will include developing new approaches to horticulture and habitat creation to advance beauty and nature in our changing climate, advancing equity, accessibility, and cultural understanding of parks and parks programs in historic, uh, among historically disadvantaged groups, building coalitions and partnerships to expand Portland's system of parks, trails, open spaces, and playgrounds. In the spirit of Joey, the Pope Fund will not be, award, be an award for past accomplishments, but rather it'll be an incentive to develop fresh approaches to evolving Portland, uh, evolving Portland parks, open space and trail system for future generations. So here's to Joey and her family. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. 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 Oh my. Yeah. 
If. if. Yes. Woo! <laughs> so, um, with that, again, thank you so much, uh, Joey and Maria and everybody for being here. And um, I'd like to now introduce um, uh, another new leader amongst us, uh, Vicki Swafferman, who's uh, a fairly new Portland Parks Foundation board member. And uh, Vicki describes her purpose in life is to be a voice for the community uh, for the, and for those who need critical support to overcome barriers. And uh, she's uh, absolutely a wonderful board member and we're so happy to have her here to uh, talk to uh, our commissioner of parks. Take it away, Vicki. Thank you, Randy. And hello, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, I feel so blessed and lucky to be among extraordinary individuals who have less, left incredible legacies um, on our community, on our youth, on our families. Um, and so thank you to everyone for being here and thank you for all that you do. Um, I am excited and I, that I have the privilege of introducing yet another amazing leader uh, who is extremely passionate about bringing people together and centering and elevating our community. Um, and this champion is Commissioner Rubio. Um, Commissioner Rubio, uh, in, 20, in 2009, she was tapped as the executive director of Latino Network, a small organization for Portland's growing Latinx community. And over the next decade, she grew Latino Network's team to 140 talented people who spent their time lifting up youth and families to achieve their potential and define their futures. Before that, she worked for Multnomah County Commissioner Serena Cruz, Mayor uh, Tom Potter, and Portland City Commissioner Nick Fish. In these roles, she's de she dedicated herself to making local government accessible and responsive. She brings this dedication to Portland's council, and she works to ensure that leaders and staff go outside City Hall to authentically listen and engage with everyone in our city. Um, she was born and raised in Hillsboro, the granddaughter of immigrants who came um, as, as migrant workers, and she is the first in her family to graduate from college and is the first Latinx member of Portland's council. Um, so I am, I am just honored <laughs> to get to introduce you, Commissioner Rubio, a thrill to have you here with us and am grateful for your incredible leadership. Personally, I'm a huge admirer of your work um, and the impact that you have created, especially through your time as executive director of Latino Network. Um, and so thank you so much for your advocacy and all that you do to continue to show up and be committed to youth and families um, who need our support. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome you and give you a chance to share a few words. Thank you, Vicki, and thank you so much for that. So that was such a kind introduction. And um, uh, I equally have heard amazing, wonderful things about you today. And um, I'd also like to add my voice in celebrating all that Joey Pope um, has done uh, for Portland Parks and by extension for the whole community. So. Uh, congratulations to Joey. Your legacy of service is so deeply felt by our community and we can't express our gratitude enough. Um, I'm honored to be surrounded by such incredible parks champions this evening. Um, I appreciate everyone's tireless efforts um, on, on behalf of our city and behalf of our beloved parks and recreation system, but also your deep belief in the mission and the work that we do and uh, the desire to, to really build uh, a world-class and maintain our world-class park system so that future generations can enjoy this, this, um, this truly remarkable community gem that we have. Thank you, Commissioner. So, uh, you know, without any further ado, I have some questions that I'd love to pose to you, um, but also want to make this conversational. Um, feel free to, to deviate as you see fit. Um, but the first question I have for you is about this new role um, and uh, what it is, has been like in your role. What is the biggest uh, surprises of the job? And what have you learned that you may have not known before um, taking on this position? 
I think the biggest surprises of the job for me were um, just how uh, it really, you know, our, our system of government is very unique. It's also complex. Um, and so it's virtually impossible to know everything or, or at, truly adequately prepare for this job. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have a few months to get ready. Um, and so I did a lot of reading. Uh, I engaged with a lot of community stakeholders and met with a lot of uh, uh, wonderful uh, public servants that work for the city. No matter how much you prepare and how much you learn, there's no cramming for the, you know, and it, it's a humbling experience. It's a constant state of learning. So I, I, I really um, appreciate, um, you know, the, the rich history of advocacy that has shaped um, a lot of our, our programs, particularly in parks um, and community engagement. Um, and so I think the key learning for me is staying open and being humble and learning as we go because it can only make you better informed. So true. So to in in your in your um, talks with individuals and in your research and your sleuthing, um, what's succeeding at PPR in your opinion? Where do we need some work? Um, and how can volunteers, friend groups, philanthropists help and get on board? Mm -hmm. That's a this is a really great question. Um, well, what's succeed? There are a lot of things that are succeeding right now. I'm thoroughly impressed at the level of, of parks engagement with the community um, and that we're really embracing um, and centering community in the work of the Bureau and also ensuring that the Bureau is creating a culture that's rooted in equity and inclusion. And that's really important because parks um, is setting the bar in some ways and, and the example, uh, not only for some other bureaus, but also um, other comparable systems, you know, around the state. So, uh, for example, um, this summer, you know, uh, because of the levy, in, uh, in part, Parks has really um, reserved half slots, you know, of all available slots. They're they're doing really intentional programming to ensure that that they are serving underserved communities, that um, BIPOC communities and low income communities are able to participate. Um, in, in ways that they haven't been before for, for various other, for, you know, there are numerous challenges and, and barriers. And I speak from this firsthand, having been um, on the nonprofit uh, side for several years and understanding some of these challenges. And um, I've been really impressed with Parks has really internalized and really taken to heart a lot of these challenges and feedback and has incorporated it, not just you know, in something that's nice to do, but as of it, as a part of its core service delivery model, which has made a, a tremendous difference. Um, and the result will be that we have 50% of our summer, summer programming um, participants coming from these communities, which, which is um, really incredible. And it's also um, uh, a lesson and it serves as an example for other places. And another place that it's been uh, a leader is in the way that it does, um, a social equity contracting. And so uh, this is something that I hadn't, that I, this is one of those examples that I couldn't have learned, uh, crammed about, you know, until actually being in the job. And um, as a city commissioner, there are numerous contracts that our um, city engages with, um, you know, every single week where we're um, approving contracts, we're, we're um, sending them out to bid. Um, and so it matters how we act at, and how we show up as as a as an entity that contracts and provides you know opportunities for jobs um, and opportunities um, to for businesses to develop, particularly minority-owned businesses. And Parks, in my opinion, has been another leader at setting the example of how we do business and how we prioritize so, social equity contracting in the bureau. So those are two places that we're really succeeding. That is incredible. Um, and really, really plays a big role in lifting up our communities of color. Um, so appreciate your leadership and work with that. Can you um, talk a little bit more about what has motivated you to do this work, um, specifically with equity and inclusion? Why is it so important to the work we do um, at PPR um, and throughout our community? I think, uh, the 
a big reason is is really how I grew up. Um, I grew up accessing parks and recreations my whole life. We didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up in my family, but we did have a lot of love and we had a lot of family. My mom on her side, uh, she, she was one of 11 and my dad was one of six. And I was so fortunate to grow up with a lot of um, aunts and uncles and um, like what felt often like hundreds of cousins, probably maybe 40, but still there were a lot of them. There were a lot of us. And um, one thing we did do every single week was that we would go to a park and have a potluck after church. And I just remember spending hours having, having fun, enjoying nature. And um, so I really grew up with um, that, that, um, that, I, that, that sense of um, identity and tied to my childhood. And so that really shaped me. And it, it, it created um, this place and the space uh, for me in, and lens that in the work that I do, it's important to have those spaces that all people can access, regardless of your background, where you live, you know that you have a park that you can go to. And that's really something that's um, important uh, for our city. And especially during COVID, we saw that often parks was the places that people felt, you know, as we were all isolating um, and, um, you know, not able to gather in spaces together, you could still find, uh, you know, peace and wellness and come together at least with your family and, and find some access to green spaces and nature in, in, your, in your park. And so that's, uh, to me, uh, a special, special opportunity that the city of Portland has is to very carefully care for this treasure that we have, but also continue to make sure that we have this accessibility in all parts of the city. Uh, so that, uh, as I mentioned before, all, all folks can access it. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and as you mentioned as well, we all play a role in making that happen. You know, we're not alone in this in this goal. Can you speak a little bit more to how volunteers and and individuals that have the passion or the interest to find out more can get involved and help to support these efforts? Sure. First, I, I just want to say that um, volunteers, friend groups, um, you know, supporters are so essential to the work of um, and the success of parks. Um, what I've come to know and that we're all proud of, park supporters are not fair weather supporters. Park supporters have been with parks uh, through thick and thin in our community. Um, and even in the years that were tough, when, you know, budgets at the city weren't, you know, weren't looking good, um, that's when our community would step up. That's when we would have volunteers. That's when we would have folks coming together and planning together and advocating together to make sure that um, we were all caring collectively for our parks and that we, they were still um, able to be accessible to everyone because we need them in those times, you know, as well. Um, so I would say, you know, we need to we need the continued leadership of a lot of, of these volunteers. Of, of these friends, of people that are generous in giving um, and uh, donations to parks um, as well, um, and ways that you can get involved, whether it's another levy, whether it's you know volunteering for a cleanup or volunteering um, just your time uh, at a community center, all of these things matter. And so um, it's, it's really shaped what we have today and it will continue to shape it going forward. So I would say we need you, um, you know, you're critical to, to the work uh, of, of parks and um, we appreciate you. Thank you, Commissioner. And uh, you, you uh, seamlessly kind of segue for me into your vision for the future of parks and um, the efforts that are being put in place to go along with that vision and help us accomplish those goals of equity and inclusion and accessibility. Um, so in, in, in addition to the levy that you mentioned, right, having another levy or um, bond, what are some future um, efforts that are being worked on or put in place um, to really strengthen this system that we're trying to create and to develop it? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that um, some really good things that are put in place now, is, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of really intentional equity work happening at parks at all levels and all programs. And we're seeing that made manifest now in how um, we do uh, outreach and engagement. And now actually um, 
creating opportunities for people who haven't always had um, the opportunities to have equal access uh, to parks. Um, so we're seeing that in real time. So, so I would say that is the way that we're moving in the future. Um, parks uh, staff has become, and, and employee, um, um, employees have become incredibly more diverse over the last you know, 15 years since I've been at the city. Um, and, and that uh, diversity is just critical to how we are responsive to the communities of Portland uh, that make up Portland today. And that's, that's what make, makes us so effective in reaching the, the families that we do. And that will continue to make us effective as we center community in all that we do. So I do believe that is the shift and the way towards the future. I would dare say it's always been the way of parks, but we just keep getting better at it, I think, and more refined um, as we go along. Um, the other way that I would say that, um, you know, we're evolving is that you know um, COVID, COVID has shown us that you know digital work will be a significant part of the way that we've had to recalibrate as a city um, um, going forward. And so um, you know, just we've been using parks, uh, community centers as lift zones. These are internet hotspots where kids can come to do work. And also during this time, we've been producing video series to replicate some of the camps that we usually run and some of the fitness lessons that, that we'd otherwise offer. And so we've heard from some community members that these videos or these, you know, these access points have really um, helped them or made the difference in some way. And you know, I, I, will, I wanna say nothing can replicate human connection, <laughs> of course, uh, but these efforts indicate that it's an area to think about and, and just one more avenue to connect people to our parks and recreation programs. Absolutely. Um, you, you hit the nail on the head and underscored accessibility. And I, I do believe this time has helped us to think creatively about how we um, reach more people. It has been an opportunity and a challenge um, for us to rise to. So appreciate the work in that regard. You know, um, it leads me to a question of, um, in addition to what community members can do to get on board and support our future vision and um, the work, the critical work that's being done, um, how can the foundation play a role in supporting um, PPR as well? We're coming up on our uh, 20th anniversary, and so it, we, we've been able to have such a great team that has accomplished so much um, and is continuing to adapt to make sure that we are showing up for the community where we're needed most. Um, what role um, does a foundation play and uh, what role do we need to play um, to execute on this incredible vision? Well, first I'll say, you know, the leadership of Randy has been in incredible and uh, he's truly um, of the community and making um, since sincere and authentic efforts to better engage all our communities um, um, in the work. And so I've appreciated getting uh, working alongside him um, and getting to know uh, the foundation better even before I took this, this um, role um, in, par in parks. Um, and also I would love to say also, um, you know, uh, congratulations uh, and appreciate my, my friend uh, Jules Bailey, who's also um, uh, on the board as well. And I understand he's leaving the, the, his, his role uh, this year. And so I um, want to appreciate him there. I would say that the foundation is absolutely critical to lifting up the work of Portland Parks and Recreation and is a, a very important complement to the work of the Bureau. Um, the uh, foundation is a, an independent thought partner with, that is very critical um, for us. Um, the foundation's able to bring innovative thinking and is also not necessarily restricted by um, the operational thinking that we often do at the parks, but you, you, you bring a different lens, um, which is a very important to the work. Um, and also, um, uh, I think another role is that the foundation really extends beyond government. Um, part of the foundation broadens our wide base of supports even more broadly and reinforces our community base and also galvanizes them when we need it. Um, they're a wonderful advocacy uh, force and also gives us really important and critical feedback when we need it as well. So um, I think those things are things that you, you cannot, um, 
you have to earn those things and you earn them through trust and through love and dedication and time. And so we're so fortunate to have uh, the great supporters and support in the work of the foundation. Thank you, Commissioner Rubio. We are so grateful to have your wealth of experience and your perspective um, with having been on the other side of, of uh, foundational life. <laughs> um, we're just grateful for all you do and your advocacy. I just want to give you um, a chance before turning it back over to JR and Silas for anything um, maybe that we didn't touch on today, today that you may wanna share or just uh, leave us with a, a bit of wisdom or uh, motivation um, to keep being champions um, for parks and and, um, and I also want to let you know we're here to support you in this critical work. Thank so you. thank you so much, Vicki. It's been so great talking to you um, for these uh, this this time that we had today. I only want to say thank you. Thank you so much for, again, your innovation. Thank you for your passion that you bring uh, to our communities. Um, thank you for your vision and for sticking with us and for being strong advocates and supporters. We would not have the system that we have, but for leaders like you. So I wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of, of council and on behalf of the thousands and countless uh, generations of children and families that are going to be um, impacted for years to come. So thank you again for having me be here. Thank you so much. I think that's you, Silas. Oh, hey, welcome. Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, hey, welcome back to us. Uh, oh, my goodness. That was just like back to back inspiration, wisdom, knowledge. Like I just am, I, I'm like full. My heart is full right now. I'm ready to go out and do something. Like, I, I mean, I feel like I haven't done enough, actually. So like, I, I want to go do something tomorrow. How yeah. About tonight. Let's do something tonight. Tonight, tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. The, the best thing about it is that at any moment folks can continue helping out the work we're doing here at the portland parks foundation um, tonight or tomorrow at any point really um hop on to our website there's several ways that you can support the foundation one you can just simply follow us on social media share our posts click the like button uh let people know like you are a supporter of the portland parks foundation that's really nice uh but you have an opportunity to become a member of the Portland Parks Foundation, uh, just join our join a membership, an annual fee, get all sorts of great benefits. Plus, you get all the invites to our really cool events that Silas and I get to host. You'll get to hang out with these two guys. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or or if you give enough, you, you don't have to hang out with us. Yes, yeah. yes, that's also a benefit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But besides us, there are so many people who made tonight possible. We're definitely wanting to thank uh, Joey. You know, you know, those words were inspirational, but be able to invest in our future generations and do our leadership and allowing, you know, folks to have access to parks. That's going to be huge. Yeah, huge. I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of that. That's going to be great. That's yeah, be great. yeah. But yeah, who knows what projects are going to come out of that. That's very exciting. We also want to give a special shout out to the person behind the screen here, uh, Jessica. If you know her, you know her. Uh, she did a wonderful job at coordinating a lot of this. We're very thankful for her uh, involvement in all of this. So cheers to you, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> wonderful. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Commissioner Rubio. Thank you, Randy Gregg. Thank you, all of our speakers. Thank you to the beautiful birds who showed us up, up at the beginning. I'm very excited to watch them this summer. I mm -hmm. also want to thank all the parks champions as well and the folks that uh, that, that were nominated. They're Again, just there's some really great projects out there. It's really humbling and inspiring to see all the great work that people are doing out in the city. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm just so thankful. And I am ready to continue um, working with Four Parks. Yes. Hey, you know where that frisbee landed anyway? I don't know. Mm. We better get out of here before yeah. they find us. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, guys. See you guys. Thanks for coming.
auditorium. Your eyes and the street lights can tell me what you want to do. Tell me what you want to do. And I won't forget all the things that you said to me. I won't let you go. Not today, not tomorrow. And I won't forget all the things that you said to me. I won't let you go. Not today, not tomorrow. Your arms around me, hearts and minds intertwined. Tell me where you want to go. Tell me where you want to go. And I won't forget all the things that you said to me. I will let you go. Not today, not tomorrow. And I won't forget. All the things that you said to me, I won't let you go. Not today, not tomorrow. Moonlit sky, tell me why my heart is on the line. God, I try to cut these ties and let you in. Finally, your heart lies, love me so tenderly. We'll find love like a diamond in the rock. Show me where to learn. Tell me.